what's the plan for going forward? I mean, just how, how do you maintain a competitive advantage um, when the virus is taking so many players out of your lineup? Well, we just uh, keep recalling players. Um, you know, other teams have uh, gone through this earlier than us. We've watched over the last two or three weeks, whether it's been Colorado or uh, Ottawa, Jersey. I think they've really dealt with it. Um, and we just keep adding players. Uh, the um, What's important to note is all of our players are coaches and to the best of my knowledge, uh, the teams around the league, nobody's experienced any significant illness uh, uh, in contract and getting the virus. So it's, it's nothing more than, uh, at this point, a, a, like a, a minor cold or, uh, like that. So that's the one thing, uh, we'll keep, you know, as long as we have bodies, uh, players that we can recall, we'll, we'll ice the best team we can and go from there. Uh, are the ones added this morning and just to make sure, uh, Robbie Fabry and Michael Rasmussen are still in protocol. Is that correct? Yes, they are. Okay. And with the five added this morning, I mean, is there a chance any of them could be false? Like with Dylan, uh, is there a process they get tested again tomorrow to deter- determine that? Or are they for sure gone for the 10-day period? Um, <laughs> good question, Elaine. It seems to be different. We have, uh, are any of them deemed uh, false? No, we've had false positives uh, in the past, but it was really due on their initial test where uh, it was kind of borderline. Um, they're deemed positive. They redo it and it's below whatever that threshold is, that it's come back negative. So usually once their their initial uh, initial test or initial sample is tested, uh, if it's positive, they rerun that test. If it is also, or they rerun a second sample, if it is positive, they're deemed positive at that point. And depending on, um, uh, God, I don't even know what, honestly, what it depends on, that they can be out for a certain number of days, uh, but usually it's a minimum of 10. I think we've gotten one or two guys back sooner than that. So uh, as you can tell, there's a whole lot of questions that I don't have the answer to. And then it seems to change with every single case, to be honest with you. Would you like to see something where, because I think it was Danny de Kaiser said he was asymptomatic through his whole thing and felt fine that if a player is asymptomatic or a coach, you know, that, that 10 day stay isn't mandatory yeah. because it seems to take, that's a chunk of time. And if there's nothing there. Yeah. Again, I'm not sure exactly how many days Danny was out, but in his case, his case being uh, vaccinated and asymptomatic, I think is the 10 day and why it's 10 days. I don't really have an answer for that either. I don't know. Um, but I think he was able to come back through testing. He was testing earlier than 10 days. And if he had two negatives in a row, he was allowed to come back. So, um, you know, these, this thing changes with every wave that we get, uh, um, whether we're better informed or the virus is different or whatnot, I don't know, but it, it, it's changing constantly. So there's a chance, I think, uh, with some of the players that we could get the asymptomatic guys, get them back earlier than 10 days. Uh, lastly, just, do you know where your team stands vis-a-vis the booster shot? Um, if everybody's had it, who? Um, not everyone has had it. I can't tell you how many guys have had it or not. Uh, um, but we are encouraging our players, our entire staff to, uh, to get the booster if they have not had it at this point. Thanks so much, Steve. Yep. You're welcome. Trevor Thompson. Hey, Steve. Um, it's one thing when your players are out, but when your head coach is out, how does that affect the way things go? And just to follow up on that, to have a guy in the system who knows the system like Ben, uh, how does that help make the transition a little more seamless? Yeah, this, this is interesting. Uh, you know, the head coach, yeah, obviously he's with the team every single day, knows his players inside and out and knows who, you know, whether it be line combinations or adjustments, the, the line combinations, uh, power play units, uh, things like that. Um, you know, he's been doing it every single day, every single game. So, uh, you know, Ben's just down, fortunately, Grand Rapids is two hours away. We can get people here logistically, no problem. Uh, they, for the most part, uh, uh, Ben and Todd know our players really well. Five or six we want to play for them this year, actually. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad of a transition. Um, I'm curious to see how it goes. I think, uh, 
know, myself never really being behind the bench and being in that position with a lot of, you know, video reviews and things like that. The, you know, things are a little bit different from the NHL to the American Hockey League, but I think for the most part, uh, you know, it'll it'll be relatively seamless transition. I know uh, Ben, Todd, and the rest of the room, along with Jeff and our staff, I'm sure they've been on the phone constantly since yesterday afternoon, going through all the different scenarios and talking about our players and what adjustments Jeff Blaschel would make and, you know, uh, what recommendations Ben will have. So I think we'll get through it fine. Um, and, uh, you know, again, our coaches, other than not being behind the bench, um, they'll be literally on the phone, maybe on an earpiece. I'm not sure to what extent, but uh, I think we'll, we'll get by just fine with it. And just following up a little on what Helene was saying, do you know if there's any talk as far as testing or protocols to maybe make some changes as far as if guys aren't um, feeling symptoms, uh, being able to stay in the lineup or any changes to testing or anything like that going forward so teams can play games? Yeah, um, uh, from from the league, you know, we take your, uh, direction from the league. And at this point, I'm not aware of uh, any changes to the testing. You know, we've gone from every three days to testing every day now. I, I don't, I'm not aware of any discussions uh, at this point or um, as far as reducing testing or not testing or, or making changes. I don't know if anything we're going to more enhanced protocols is, is the uh, phrase of the day right now um, to try and uh, contain things a little bit, I guess. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Max Goldman. Hey, Steve, just to clarify, is, is Doug Huda then the acting head coach tonight or is, is Ben going to be the head coach or how, how does that work out? <laughs> you know what? After we get off this call, I'll find out. I'll go and ask that question because it's my understanding that uh, Ben was uh, uh, going to be the acting head coach and Doug would remain in his role running the D. That's my understanding. Um, it is a fluid situation, so that may have changed from my last conversation with Jeff Flash. I'd okay. hate to see a guy demoted before he's actually coached his first game. <laughs> uh, and I guess on, on the Olympics, do you, do you have an opinion on whether that makes sense for the NHL at this time? Um, well, looking at it today, I don't, I'm not so sure. I'm a big supporter of our guy. You know, I know a lot of people in our league are, aren't. I'm a big supporter of our players playing. Uh, I, pl I went as a player. I served on the management team. Uh, I think it's overall, it's great for our league and it's great for our game. Under the circumstances, I certainly understand the league's uh, apprehension, even more so than uh, under normal circumstance. And from a player perspective, I got to think there would be some concerns of, uh, what happens, obviously, the biggest issue is if, if we do get COVID over there, what's going to happen? Uh, so um, personally, I'm fine with whatever everyone decides to do. I'm not involved. But in general, I'm, uh, uh, I think the NHL players playing in the Olympics is a great thing. And then just really quick while we have you, um, the, the Robbie Fabry extension last week, why did that uh, deal make sense for, for you guys? Well, I, I believe Robbie's been a, a very good player for us. Um, you know, my intention was to re-sign him. His age, uh, you know, the age he's at, excuse me, is, is uh, you know, he's right in the mix with, with what I call our, you know, our veterans. And that's like Dylan Larkin and Tyler Bertuzzi. These guys are really young. Uh, he's performed very well for us. Um, you know, the term and the dollar amount was agreeable to both parties and, you uh, um, you know, what's held Robbie back in his career has only been some injuries. And uh, over the last two years since he's arrived with us, you know, I forget COVID, uh, you know, testing positive for that and missing games. He's only gotten better as a player and uh, uh, he's a you know, uh, very valuable player for us. So uh, we were able to work out a contract that makes sense for both parties. And I'm, I'm very happy to have him here. Thanks, Steve. Bob Duff. Steve, uh, a question I get asked a lot by fans is like, what's the kind of the barometer where the league decides it's time to shut it down and postpone games for a team? Like, you know, there doesn't seem to be a clear picture of that from the outside. On the inside, do you have any clearer idea of uh, what it would take to have them say, okay, you guys are not playing? Bob, no, I don't. I, I'm honestly the same. It's just uh, my understanding is the league is going on a day-to-day -day basis and a, and a team-to-team -team basis. And, 
in making a judgment call at that time, what parameters uh, uh, weigh into that decision, I really don't know. Uh, as, of, as of this moment, we're playing tonight. Our test, uh, other than uh, Adelkovic, our entire team and, and coaching staff and, and, and uh, training staff, everyone here is tested negative and we plan on playing, but I really don't know what the, uh, what the protocol is. I've talked to the managers of some of the teams who have been postponed. And uh, um, again, it's, it's just making a call. I believe it's uh, the league with their doc, the, the doctors and the PA kind of combining to come up with a decision on whether the play or not. And, you know, looking at it from the outside again, you know, playing a Carolina team the other night with six guys already tested positive and now five more positive tests on your team. You know, it kind of looks like maybe that wasn't the greatest idea. Um, I'm not so sure, uh, Bob, I really, I don't know what the right thing is at the end of the day, I think, uh, and now I'm getting political, but at the end of the day, uh, our players are testing positive with very little symptoms, if any symptoms at all. Uh, I don't see it as a threat to their health, uh, at this point. So I think you might take it a step further and question why are we even testing? Uh, for guys that have no symptoms. Okay, thanks. Amy Edmonds. Bob asked my one question already, Steve, but my other question would be, there's been a lot of dissension among NFL players on Twitter. What is the feeling in the locker room with your team on all of this? Can you be more specific uh, on all of what? Well, just all of the testing, the people that have to be out for 10 days, how it affects your season, what is their mentality going through all of this for what seems like another year? Um, you know, I, I haven't heard, you know, the players, I think ultimately they want to play. Um, I don't think, and I get, you probably need to ask them that, you know, guys I've talked to, nobody really has any, is none of the players have come to us and said, Hey, we should shut this down. Uh, if they feel that way, they haven't expressed that to us. Um, I, I think our players have been very positive in that. Just tell us what we need to do and we'll do it. They've been uh, acceptive of the uh, protocols, uh, whether they like them or not is irrelevant, but they've been uh, willing to do them. I, ultimately, I think they just want to play and, and get through this to the best uh, for all. Nobody wants anybody to get uh, violently ill or deathly ill, anything like that. Guys are willing to do their part. Um, but right now, I think, I guess uh, my perception is they'll do what they have to do. They want to play and uh, get through it. Hi, Steve. Last year, the Red Wings went through this with COVID protocol. and You guys soldiered through it to the tune of a zero six and two record. I know the team's differently, but I'm kind of curious, even though no one's sick, there's, or not gravely ill, they're still out of the lineup. Will there reach a point where based on what happened last year, where you think to yourself, look, I'm, we're going to contact the league and say, we think that we should pause, that we should stop playing games. Do you have that option? Well, I think I can I can call the league and tell them, give them my opinion, um, and they will listen and take it into consideration. But uh, I, you know, I believe they're going to act and, and make a decision based on what they think the right thing to do is for the health of everyone involved, for for the health of society in general. I think we're try I think they're trying to be responsible, um, taking the integrity of each game into account as well. The reality is we, you know, we want to play these games and you weigh off playing them now with a depleted roster versus packing these games in after, you know, towards the end of the schedule. So every team, I think at this point that's been affected by it has done everything they can to keep playing. Uh, and I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, we just played in Carolina. They had a bunch of guys out. We had a couple out um, and, you know, they, they, could have, you know, probably debated. I'm sure they debated. Geez, we're missing Svechnikov, we're missing all whoever else. Let's put this game off. Um, and they played and, and they won. So you know what? We got to figure out a way. As long as we're playing, we figure out a way to win games. And some guys are getting just looking at it from a hockey perspective. 
Uh, some guys are getting a great opportunity to play, whether it's uh, Thomas Grayson Nett tonight or Riley Barber or uh, Taro Hirose. Go out and have a positive impact. It's great for a great opportunity for them to take advantage of a chance to play in the NHL. And we got to figure out a way to win games. So, Art, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit around and feel sorry for ourselves. Ultimately, if we have enough players um, and, and it's deemed safe enough, which I believe it is, uh, we'll keep playing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong then, Steve. Was there a point last year where didn't you come out and say, maybe I should have rethunk it They not played when we had five regulars out? Did you? Well, uh, our issue at the time was, a, again, it wasn't my decision. I, I don't even know whose decision ultimately it was at that point. But, um, you know, we were one of the first teams with a, that had an outbreak. And our, my issue at the time last year was we played through it. And then two weeks later, teams weren't playing through it. And I was like, what's, the, what's changed? You know, that was the issue we had. So as long as we're being consistent as a league, which – Believe it or not, I think we are being consistent. We're doing everything we can to get games in. Obviously, when you get a situation like Calgary's in, where where the whole team is positive, virtually the whole organization, at least it appears to be, then then you know they shut things down. Um, and so we're not there yet here. But again, going back to last year, it was you know what we played, and my issue at that time was. We played without all these players. We lost all these games. Now teams are, are shutting down and playing them later. I didn't think there was any consistency to it at that point. All right, Steve, one final question and a hockey question. I think most people on this call know that you excelled as a teenager in the NHL for the Red Wings. Are you pleasantly surprised or do you look at Raymond and Sider and think that they're doing what they should be doing? Well, uh, you know, we watched both of them last year. Uh, you know, Moritz playing 20 plus minutes a night, I think, in Rogala. Um, so our, our thought was that he would be ready to play in the NHL at the start of the season. Um, and with uh, Lucas a little bit different because he didn't play a big role uh, in Frolunda. Um, and, he, and he got injured, missed a lot of time at the uh, end of the season. So going into the year, we really weren't sure what to expect uh, uh, from Lucas. We didn't want to rule him out from playing, but truthfully, we kind of thought, you know, we're probably going to take some time in the American Hockey League just based on what we saw last year. So um, with each day, starting with uh, the first day of our rookie tournament in Traverse City, uh, Lucas has gotten better and better. And, you know, after whatever, 30 games in the NHL, He's, he's one of our top players. He looks extremely comfortable out there. He's getting, you know, his play uh, uh, in all aspects of the game is, is solid. Um, so, uh, you know, are they exceeding our expectations? Maybe so. Um, but I don't think watching them, they're doing anything that they can't uh, uh, sustain or, if anything, improve upon. Well, the biggest adjustment that both of them have to make is just – the grind of the day-to-day -day and the consistency that you need to be uh, an elite level NHL player? I think so. If, if you've spoken with them or I know I've spoken with them and, and just been talking uh, with, with our staff who are, are in the locker room and on the bench and uh, every single day, the biggest adjustment is, is playing so many games over a short period of time, the late nights, the travel and, and, you know, you know, having, you know, getting in at two or three in the morning and then having to play the next day. Uh, that's a, that's probably the biggest adjustment for them. You know, the European leagues play roughly, I think, 48 games. Um, and, uh, you know, playing, we've already played 30. It's not even Christmas yet. So I think that's the biggest adjustment for them and uh, learning how to uh, kind of manage your, you know, get, get your rest, uh, uh, get yourself ready to play. It just, it just wears you down the, the late nights, the travel, uh, and then having to play at your best every single night is, is a challenge. But both kids are, are I believe, are mentally tough. Um, they're very competitive. They're good athletes. So they'll figure it out along the way and just get better and better. Great. Last question, Steve Kornacki. Hi, Steve. Can you share, what, what time was it when you learned, uh, when you got the COVID test news, that you knew things were going to be different today? Well, um, you know, this is kind of you know, yeah, uh, two days. What was it in Carolina? Was it in Carolina or uh, 
we've got uh, uh, Fabry and Rasmussen test positive. Uh, we the test for Jeff Blaschel. Uh, uh, yesterday's positives were yesterday, and then the only positive we've had today is uh, uh, Nadalkovich. So, um, you know, that's that's the timeline for it. We learn that the guys come in every morning and get their tests. It takes about thirty minutes to get the uh, to get the results. So, I think Ned was here about nine a.m. and by nine thirty, we unfortunately get a you get a call and uh, you know with the update. Talk about the challenges that you're facing today. You have to decide who's behind your bench, who's, you know, who, what adjustments you have to make on the ice. And could you talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, you know, the coaches don't listen to me anyways when the pucks drop, so <laughs> I don't have to do anything different. I expect these guys to ignore me like, like Jeff would if he was here. So, um, you know, no, it's, uh, you know, for the coaches, uh, you know, for, we're very fortunate that Grand Rapids is two hours away. You know, at 930, I get a call. Fortunately for us, Grand Rapids is in, is in Grand Rapids, not last weekend they were in Manitoba. You know, it would have been just another complication for getting guys to St. Louis and Denver. And in fact, we were trying to get guys from Denver to Winnipeg and we couldn't get them there in time for the game. But we're fortunate to have Grand Rapids just down the road. Their games this weekend against the Mar Toronto Marlies were canceled. So they were practicing. So we're able to get a hold of pick at the rink, jump in your car and drive over. He's here in two hours and 15 minutes. So, um, uh, you know, uh, are the adjustments it's, it's, you know, Jeff Blaschel is, is, uh, Alex Tangy. They're here every single day working with the players. The adjustment for Ben and, and Todd Krieger will be as much as they know our players, uh, you know, they're making adjustments on the fly, whether, you know, line changes, matchups, just getting a feel for, you know, they'll obviously I, they'll talk to Jeff Blaschel about our entire team and the way we do things. It's within the game of, you know, who's, you know, making that quick decision on a, on a line change or, or switching things up a little bit. And probably is, is just dealing with the, the coaches challenges that come along, not necessarily every game, but it seems like you have one a game almost that uh, is, is making that quick decision. And, uh, um, that'll be, that'll be interesting to see how they handle that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Okay. That's it for us this morning. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.